Now what? Okay, so you're fully aware that it's really easy to get overwhelmed with your first Doberman. But trust me, I know firsthand how overwhelming that first night with a new puppy at home can be, uh, especially with a Doberman pup. So that's why I made this video that's all about exactly what to expect your first night with your new pup and uh, what you should have ready ahead of time uh, so that you're not doomed before the night even starts. Now, some of these are really obvious, but others are just really easy to miss, and they're gonna make for a really stressful first night uh, with your new pup. So these are what I consider the must-haves for your first night with your puppy. Puppy food. Now, make sure you get the exact same type of puppy food that your dog was eating at the breeders that they came from, because you don't wanna change the dog food on your pup um, right now when they're, they're already uncomfortable enough. They're in a new home, a new owner. They're away from their mom and their siblings. And changing dog foods can lead to diarrhea, gas, problems, upset stomach. You don't want them dealing with that on their first night. Trust me, it's already gonna be a hard enough night. So keep them on the exact same type of food for at least the next day or two, um, maybe even longer. And then you can slowly start transitioning them to whatever food you want. Now, a lot of you guys ask me what I'm feeding Arlo, my pup. I'm giving him Purina Pro Plan Focus. This is the same food, it's just a different bag. Um, that's my current recommendation, but my recommendations do change over time. Like if I get see a new research, new studies, to think that something might be better than this. So check down below in the description of this video, look for best Doberman food and click that link and you'll see whatever my current recommendation is uh, for Doberman food. Another one is treats and treats are really important uh, to help motivate them to get into their crate, to help uh, reward them for different actions they do. Treats are super important. Uh, I suggest getting something with a variety of ingredients that's different than their puppy food. So if their puppy food is like a chicken based formula, maybe a salmon based uh, treat for example, or vice versa. Um, but whatever you have in the puppy food, try to get something a little bit different to help with a variety in their diet. The next one is accident cleanup spray and lots of paper towels. This is easy to forget. So make sure you have this on hand ahead of time. Um, it's something that's safe on all different types of flooring, including carpet, uh, that will destroy the odors and eliminate the enzymes as well to help discourage uh, going to the bathroom in the same spot in the future. I like nature's miracle for this, but there's a whole different lots of other products out there as well um, that will do a similar job. The next one is lots of toys, guys. Have toys of all different types and textures, rubber toys, uh, uh, nylabone type toys, plush toys, rope toys, anything you can think of. The plush toys are great. You'll need that in the crate training section. We'll get to that in a second. Um, it's very comforting for the dog, but you gotta keep an eye on those plush toys because they tend to get destroyed a little quick. So you gotta throw them out, but you, you can't have too many toys. Get lots of them. It'll make that first night super easy. Guys, you're also gonna need two bowls, one for food, one for water. I really like stainless steel bowls and there's a reason why the material of the bowl matters. Doberman puppies are really sensitive, especially on the bottom of their chin. And sometimes uh, they can get a reaction to the material that's in their bowl because they're rubbing their chin on the bottom of the bowl while they're eating. And if you ever see little red like pimples starting to pop up underneath your dog's chin, that's where it's coming from. So I like stainless steel. There's a least chance of reaction with the dog's skin. Um, on rare occasion, you'll get a Doberman who will get a reaction on stainless. It's pretty rare. If that happens, you can switch them to plastic or ceramic bowls, but I think stainless is kind of the safest way to start. Next one is a leash and a collar. This is obvious, but guys, you don't need to spend a lot of money here. Get something cheap that works, um, that's secure, because they're gonna outgrow the collar pretty quick. But you need a way to maintain control of the dog in all different situations. In my opinion, a crate is very important. Uh, it teaches a dog to hold it all throughout the night. And uh, that's one of the worst parts about having a new puppy is, is making sure there's no accidents in the middle of the night. A crate pretty much solves most of that right out of the gate. If the size of the crate is just big enough to where the puppy's comfortable and can move around a bit, but is not too big to where he can go off to a corner of the crate and, and have an accident and then come and sleep in a different section, um, then it's about the right size. So you want the crate a little bit bigger than the dog itself, a nice, a uh, plush bed in there, a plush toy, because he's used to sleeping with his brothers and sisters. So a plush toy makes him feel right at home. Um, some sort of rhythmic sound in the room can also help. A, a clock ticking or even a baby noisemaker can really help. And if you get a wire one like this one here, um, cover up the sides so the sides are all covered up and he can only see out towards the bed. When I put this blanket down like this, 
Uh, my pup can only see my bed and all the other walls are all solid around him. So he feels like a nice, uh, like he's in a nice tight uh, dog den. Uh, and he should be pretty comfortable in there for his first night. Now having a safe place to transfer your dog to while they're sleeping during the daytime, separate from their dog crate, is I think really important. Um, they want to still be a part of the family and they'll just get stressed out if they go in a crate in a back bedroom. So I have this crate here. It's positioned in an area where he can see the family room or Andy can see the kitchen, all places the family might be, but he's kind of off in a corner and he's penned in where he's safe. So he feels kind of secure and he takes his daytime uh, naps in here. I just transfer him when he's real tired. Um, I use this little portable uh, uh, little wire fence here. Um, put a nice soft plush dog bed in there. Don't go overboard. It's probably going to get destroyed. So something cheap but soft is good. Um, I wrap mine with a blanket so that way the blanket is more likely to get destroyed first before the bed and I can just switch the blanket out. I have two of his favorite toys in there. He only gets when he's in this crate and a real plush one to help him feel safe and secure. Notice the size of it. It's not like too big because if it's too big, it'll uh, encourage accidents. It's just a little bit bigger than the bed itself, but this is a great way to have a safe spot for the puppy to go to so they don't get overwhelmed throughout the day. All right, the first night with your new puppy. Guys, I think this is where the gold nuggets in this video are. Uh, this is a lot of stuff I wish I had known, but here's the lovely things you get to expect uh, your first day or so with your new pup. First off, a little tip for you guys. I suggest taking at least a day or two off of work, preferably a week and two weeks if you can do it, it's even better. But you need some time to focus on the dog. They're gonna be very high maintenance that first day or two. They're gonna be getting used to their new surroundings and it's not the time for the owner that they should be bonding with to disappear for a good chunk of the day. So take a little time off work if you can to help get your dog settled in. Also, they're gonna chew everything in the house. This is really normal. They use their mouth to kind of feel things and get used to their environment. But I'm talking everything, power cords, uh, furniture, uh, trim work, everything. So make sure you spend a little time puppy proofing your home, look for power cords that are hanging out, trash cans they can get access to, cleaning products that they might be able to get into, uh, dangerous poisonous house plants. Um, all these things you gotta think about a little bit ahead of time. Uh, do this before you get your Doberman pup um, because trust me, that mouth and those little sharp puppy teeth are gonna be all over your house. The next one is guys, they sleep a lot and it's normal. Don't worry about it too much, uh, 18 to 20 hours a day of sleep for an eight week old puppy is totally normal. So no, you didn't get a broken dog. There's nothing wrong with your pup. <laughs> your puppy is gonna need to eat a lot more often than you might think. Three to four meals a day spread out evenly throughout the day. That's how much you're gonna have to eat. Um, this is normal. As I grow into adulthood, you can start to reduce it to, you know, three or two larger meals throughout the day, but make it at the same time every day so that they get used to an established routine. This will help make them feel more comfortable in their new environment. Okay guys, the next one is they go to the bathroom a lot. And I mean a lot. Every two hours is pretty normal, sometimes more often than that. Right after they eat, right after they have some exercise, um, it's gonna be a lot more than you think. So make sure you plan out your potty training and stick to that schedule religiously. I did a potty training video recently. Might be able to help you out. Should be popping up in the corner of your screen. Um, but take them out more often than you think you need to. If you have some failed trips outside, you're on track and you're doing good. It's okay if you take them out more than they need. Okay, so that first evening, you're kind of wrapping up the evening. Make sure they eat about two hours before you put them to bed. This is so that they can kind of have a full stomach, but yet it's been long enough that they've hopefully eliminated themselves. You've taken them out to go to the bathroom. Um, so all that food and water has gone through them. So hopefully they're pretty well drained by the time you put them in their crate. Then put them in their crate. Make sure they're comfortable. They have everything they need. They've, they've had their food and their water, you know, two hours prior and that they've, they've gone to the bathroom. You're going to get cries right away. You put them in there, you're going to get cries right away. I pretty much promise you for most dogs. Now these are cries for attention. You got to be able to determine between cries for attention and cries to go to the bathroom because you need to respond to cries to go to the bathroom. Well, how do you tell the difference? Well, when you put them in, uh, Initially, when you know that they've gone to the bathroom, then of course those are cries for attention. You can't react to those because if you get up and you go give them love and attention, you bring them into the bed, um, they're going to learn that those cries and uh, even borderline howls that they do get a response from you and you're going to have a really hard time breaking them with this. you got to just ignore them. It's so hard, I know, and the, the barking and the crying is really loud sometimes, especially when you got a quiet house at night for everybody in the house. Apologize to your roommates or family or whoever. It's going to be hard that first week, but you got to ignore those cries and just sit there like they're not even crying. Then once they fall asleep, um, 
if they wake up and they do like a little whimper, boom, you gotta be all over that. You gotta respond to that. Take them out. That whimper after they've fallen asleep is usually nine times out of 10 because they need to uh, go to the bathroom. So make sure you respond to those. Uh, again, pick them up, bring them out, have them do their business. Make sure you're ready for it. Have shoes out, have a uh, sweatshirt out, flashlight, whatever you need. Do not call them out. Do not say, hey, come on, let's go outside. They're gonna take a detour and have an accident, I promise you. So pick them up, bring them out, have them do their business, bring them right back, put them back to bed. They're gonna cry again while they're going to sleep. That's okay. The first night, you're gonna probably take them out three to five times, that's normal. Um, after the first week, you'll probably be down to maybe one trip out during the night, maybe two at most. Uh, so you'll get over it quickly and the crying will also subside after the first week or two. Uh, but you gotta ignore some and it, it sucks, but you gotta do that in the beginning. Just make sure they're comfortable, they have everything they need, they just went to the bathroom, and you know those cries are just because they they're, uh, want some attention from you. Make sure they're close enough so you can hear everything and they can wake you up with those whimpers in the night. Uh, but um, do these things and stick with them and you'll get through it, I promise. Guys, one of the absolute best tips I can possibly give you is that routine thing again. Stick to a routine, develop a routine for potty training, for feeding, for kind of your daily uh, tasks with exercise and things. Develop a routine so your puppy knows what to expect every day. And trust me, it's gonna speed up everything so much quicker. They're gonna feel more comfortable in your house. They're gonna get the hang of potty training quicker. Everything is gonna go a lot smoother if you kind of help them get comfortable by uh, getting them the comfort of a routine early on. Just don't get overwhelmed, guys. It's really easy to do your first night with a Doran pup and kind of plan some things out ahead of time. Really think it through. Um, I, hopefully this has given you a good starting point. A lot of the products that I mentioned in this video are listed down below. Actually, I think in every video description, pretty much. Um, and there is a list of my favorite products for Dobermans, the ones that I use. Uh, specifically for this video, the list of puppy must-haves is a great one and the list of the be uh, best food and treats for your puppy or for Dobermans down below in the description is a good one to reference as well that might help you out with getting ready and getting prepared for your Doberman pup. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Tell me some of your horror stories or your success stories of your first night with your Doberman pup and maybe even some tips to help other people out. I love it when you guys are, are throwing in all your tips and all your advice. You guys are really being just great Doberman breed ambassadors and helping new owners through this process. So thanks for that, keep that up. Hit that subscribe button down below, the little bell icon that comes up next to it so you get notified of any future videos and uh, I will see you next week. Where are all these crickets? Why are there birds in here? Thank <laughs> you.